Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to make smoked ribs on a gas grill. It's really easy. Um, I've done this quite a bit and I've got a pretty simple set of steps um, that always turn out pretty good. So start with a set of decent quality baby back ribs. And uh, for these, key thing is always make sure if your butcher hasn't already done it, pull off the fell. It's a membrane on the back. It's a very thin membrane, but you want to get that off. If you leave it on, then the rub won't soak into the meat, and it'll also have a little bit of a foul, chewy taste to it, so you want to avoid that. The other thing is I do is uh, I clean up the meat a little bit and cut off some of the excess fat. You don't have to cut off all the fat because the fat is actually good when it cooks in. It, it uh, helps keep the meat moist, but at the same time, you don't want too much fat on it where you're eating a lot of fat when you actually eat the rib. So I clean it up just a little bit. These ribs, pretty good shape. There's not a lot of fat on them. So I'm just going to take away some of that there. And it actually looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit on the back here. Don't worry too much about the back. Like I said, <clears throat> you don't have to get all the fat off. You're not really trying to create a steak. And you usually cook ribs long enough that a lot of this will cook down. All right, that's probably good enough about like that. Now, next thing I do is I have two kinds of rubs that I like to use. One is this uh, Cajun rub made by Fat Boy, and it's got a lot of salt in it. Salt, little cayenne, pepper, little black pepper in there, uh, but it's very salty. It's so salty that the first time I used it, I used too much of it, and it, it basically ruined the ribs because it was too salty. But I like to have a little bit of salt there on the first layer. I don't put much. One mistake you can make is putting too much rub on your ribs and thinking that you're going to make really great ribs because you completely covered them in your rub, but that's not necessarily true. What I like to do is I like the flavor of the pork to come through, mostly have a little bit of smoky flavor to it, and then let the rub add some flavor on top of that. But I want to taste, I want to taste the pork and not, not as much of the rub, so that's the key. Put a little bit on it like that. Make sure you kind of get some on the edges. Edges are easy to miss, but that's where a lot of the flavor is. Like that. Then what I do is I use this bone sucking sauce. It's a little sweeter. You can use whatever kind of rub you want, but again, the key is just don't use too much of it. So you can see, I'm not just completely soaking it down. I'm just putting enough in there to give it a flavor and rubbing it in real good. Like that. So you can see if you don't pull that fell membrane off the back, this rub won't soak into the meat. The membrane will stop it. So that's why you want to pull it off. That's the back side. Flip it over. Do the same thing with the front. Put that salty stuff on first. put the bone sucking rub on it. Like 
that. That's about all it is to that part. So you can see there's a little bit of rub on it, but not too much. So then what we'll do is we'll let this sit overnight. I'd say at least six to eight hours, but I'd like to do mine overnight. And, uh, and then after that, we'll smoke them on the gas grill, which I'll show you how to do, for 30 minutes at about 300 or less. Obviously with pork, low and slow, always better. So I smoke them for about 30 minutes, and then I wrap them up in tin foil, and I put uh, some sort of a fruit juice in there, cover the top. I put a little bit of this bone sucking sauce here, which is very, very good. It's a little spicy, it's hot, and it uh, helps to keep the meat moist, but I wrap that up in foil, seal it up real good. I like to use a little bit of apricot juice in there, uh, create a little sweet steam, and, uh, and then I, I put it back on the grill at about 275 for um, about an hour and a half and then I uh, take it back off and uh, open it up and then I put it back on the grill and I uh, caramelize it and I turn the heat up a little bit to about uh, yeah, 300, 310 or so for about 30 more minutes put another layer of sauce on it and uh, let them caramelize and finish cooking and uh, the key is I, I don't let them cook too long. If I let them cook too long like that, then the meat really does fall off the bone. And even though that always sounds good when meat falls off the bone, I like my ribs to be just to the point where the meat's falling off the bone, but they, they still have a little tug to them, which means you can, you can cut in between the ribs, you can pick up the ribs, and the meat still sticks to the bone a little bit, but the slightest little pull, um, it comes right off. And that's, that's the perfect rib for me. So we're going to put these in the refrigerator and let them, uh, let them finish soaking in that rub overnight and then we'll, uh, we'll start smoking them tomorrow. Okay, so now uh, we're ready to uh, cook our ribs. They've been sitting in the refrigerator with the rub on them uh, overnight. And uh, so what I want to do now is I want to, I want to prepare my smoke pouches. Um, so here I've got my, uh, these are uh, actual uh, cherry tree wood chips. They've been soaking now for about an hour, at least 30 minutes, but somewhere between 30 minutes to two hours, you'll get different opinions on that. I think 30 minutes is probably enough. And uh, I use a couple of different kinds of smoking things. I've got a, a Weber Genesis three burner gas grill. Um, so you can produce smoke on a gas grill pretty easy. Um, I have this cast iron thing that I use and what I do is I put this on the grill and I get it hot before I put the chips in it instead of putting the chips in it and then putting it on there. Um, it just accelerates the process for me. But in addition to that, because I want a little bit more smoke than what that one produces, is uh, I make these foil pouches and you've probably, probably seen this before. It's a fairly easy operation. You just grab a handful of your wood chips here, kind of spread them out a little bit like that. And uh, you don't want to make too thick of a, a pouch um, because you want the heat really to touch as many chips as it can. And uh, one of the tricks with what we're doing here with pork that you'll find out, <clears throat> there's a challenge here because uh, you want to cook pork slow at about around 260, 275, and that's usually not hot enough to get the chips to actually smolder. So what you'll find is if you try to do that, you might not have any smoldering at all of your wood chips. So that's kind of the trick with this of what I'm gonna explain is what I do is I get the grill hot um, at about 350, 400 or so, or even hotter, um, enough where it'll ignite the chips and, and at least begin to get them to smolder. And then I'll turn the heat down and then I'll put the ribs on once they start smoldering and smoking. So that's kind of a trick. If you don't do it that way, you'll either cook your ribs too hot, which you don't want to do, or uh, you'll cook them uh, low at the right temperature but with not enough smoke. So this is the hard part about doing this, but it's actually easy once you see how I'm going to do it. Notice what I did is I poked a couple of holes in the top there. You don't want to poke too many or it'll just catch on fire, especially if it's hot enough. So I poke just enough where they can start to smolder. And I'm going to make 
probably uh, two more of these and then uh, I'll heat the grill up and get it all going. Next thing I'll do, I'll do is I'll put the uh, take the ribs out and I will uh, I'll put those on the on the grill once it gets smoking. Alright now I've got my grill heated up here. Uh, as you can see it's well above 500 degrees. It's about 550 degrees which is way too hot to cook pork. But right now I'm interested in just getting my smoke going. So this solves the issue of, of going through all this trouble and never getting any smoke. So I'll get the smoke going first and then once it starts smoking then I'm going to turn everything down and let it cool off a little bit. Whatever I want my cooking temperature to be. So I'll put these wood chips in here first. Get these going like this. What I'm also going to do, I'm going to throw on my pouches here. And I'll let those start smoking. And uh, since this is a three burner grill, when I turn it down, I'll probably turn these two off, and if I if I need to heat up the pouches to smoke again, I can turn them up on this end, but I'll put the pork over here so that they're not directly over the smoke and the hot part. So that's a good way to keep those two separate. So I'll let this get going here. And I will come back and, and uh, wait for it to start smoking, and then we'll put the ribs on. Alright, so now as you can see they're smoking pretty good. So I'm gonna turn this heat down there. I'm gonna take my ribs here. And I'm gonna put them on the other side. I'm gonna put them a little closer here where they can get a little bit of smoke. Then I'm gonna close it. And because I've turned it off, the temperature is gonna drop back down. And I don't really want it to to maintain over 300, but since we're only smoking them for just 30 minutes, it's okay. It's not going to stay that long. So the uh, main thing is just to keep an eye on it. Don't let it get too hot. Um, you know, make sure it can you continue to get some good smoke. And you don't necessarily have to have heavy white smoke. That's actually not the good smoke. What you want is the smoke you see here if you can see it, which is kind of a blue steady smoke, um, that has the most flavor. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll let that uh, continue to smoke for about 30 minutes and then we'll take them off and wrap them and, and uh, take the next step. So now it's smoking pretty good. It's been on there about 10 minutes and uh, it stopped to smoke a little bit and that that's the tricky thing you have to deal with so what I did was I uh, I turned the heat back up on the burner that's underneath the smokers and I also propped up the the hood a little bit which keeps the temperature from getting too hot so I could keep the temperature down it's still a little hotter than what I wanted um, it's dropping back down now though it was uh, upwards of about 360 or or 320 something like that so it's dropping back down below 300 but that's the thing that you have to constantly monitor is a balance of keeping your smoke going but not letting it get too hot at the same time so uh, I do this quite a bit is prop up that hood just a little bit to keep it from getting uh, too hot but at the same time there's enough heat on your chips to keep them smoking so you'll just have to play with it and keep an eye on it but right now it's smoking pretty good I'm pretty happy with the temperature and in about 20 more minutes, we're going to take them off and, uh, and wrap them up in foil. All right, so it's been exactly 30 minutes. You can see our temperature is spot on at about 265. Uh, so they've got plenty of smoke on them. I'm real happy with that. So the next thing we're going to do is wrap them in tin foil. And what I do is I use two layers on the bottom. This is aluminum foil. Actually, I just call them tin foil sometimes. And then just one layer on top. The reason I use two on the bottom is there's bones in the bottom of the, the ribs there. And if they fill in the bottom, all your juices will spill out. 
and they won't steam as good. So you want to make sure you don't do that. The other thing I do, I turn the pan upside down so I've got a good flat surface. Usually the ribs are longer than the pan for me and that can cause the bones to stick through the bottom. So it's another little trick that I do. So before I do that, sort of take this and make a little boat. I want to hold all the juices in like that. Put the ribs here. Lay them in it like that. I can already smell the smoke and the rub and the different flavors coming together. They smell pretty good. So then what I'll do, over here I've got a, you can use any kind of fruit juice. Sometimes I use apple juice, sometimes I use apricot juice. Today I'm going to use pineapple juice. And uh, what I do is pour a little bit over the top, like that. And then I pour a little bit on each side. Probably use about half a can, maybe just a little bit more. And then I take this bone sucking sauce which is it's like a really thin barbecue sauce you can use barbecue sauce you can use mustard and honey you can experiment with what you want you just have to find out what works best for you I like this because it's spicy oh, right there I felt it on my feet I, I had a leak I let some of the app the uh, pineapple juice out so I have to reapply good thing I didn't use the whole can wasn't being very careful so fortunately I caught that didn't lose too much of it coat that down pretty good we'll do it again on the final phase you'll see just wanted to cover it in there so if you can take a look at that you can kind of see it's got a nice glaze it's going down into all the little open cracks and everything give it good flavor so then what I do is I'm going to go ahead and seal it up here be real careful not to poke any holes you don't want anything leaking out you don't want to pull it too tight if you, if you pull it too tight those bones can poke holes in the foil you just want to kind of gently close it up Enough where it traps that steam. That's the key thing that you want. And then what we're going to do, we're going to put them back on the grill and we're going to cook them at a real even temperature of about 270. And because they're sealed up, it doesn't matter if you cook them on the grill or not. You can uh, just as easily have your oven preheated and put them in the oven. Um, I personally like to to do mine on the grill because it feels like it's more of a mucho macho man thing to do instead of being a girly man and cooking them in the oven. So I'm going to put them in here and uh, I'm going to just kind of get my temperature back up pretty quickly here. Let that warm back up and then I want to get my temperature at about 265, 270 right in there. And like I did earlier, if it gets too hot because it's a hot day and sometimes this, this grill can get too hot, I'll crack open the lid a little bit and put a, something in there, a little wedge to uh, keep that temperature consistent. So right now it's very important to have these cook in the foil at a very steady temperature for an hour and a half and you don't touch them. Alright, you can see they've been cooking perfectly now for an hour and a half. Nice and consistent. So now what I'm going to do is gonna open them up. That's what you want to see. Lots of juice still left in there. That means there were no, no leaks or anything like that. And uh, they smell real good. I can smell the smoke. I can smell all the flavors. 
So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take them and I'm going to just drag them out onto the grill here. Like this. Remove that foil. Pretty much they're almost done at this point. Now we want to caramelize them. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to heat up my grill here. Get these guys going. That was already on. I'm going to put a little bit more of the bone sucking sauce there on them. We're going to finish cooking them about the same temperature, but because they're open now and outside the foil, this will just help dry them up a little bit and it'll help caramelize them. So we'll leave them like that and then we'll come back in about 25 30 minutes. So we're down to the last 10 minutes here and uh, I've elected to just turn the grill off and let it cool down on its own it's about 250 degrees right now which is perfectly fine so no foil they're open they're just uh, finishing cooking so no risk of overcooking I'm just gonna let them sit there and cool off for uh, about 10 more minutes and then uh, we'll take them off. Okay, now they're uh, they're ready. There they are, nice and caramelized. You can see the color on them looks great. Um, sometimes if they're too tender, when you even pick them up, they, they, they fall apart and, and that's okay. It just means that they're, they're already falling off the bone. So these are these are not quite that tender, which is perfect. So what I want to do is got my pan ready here. So I'm just going to pick these up, put them on here like this, and then we're going to take them inside and we're going to cut them up. Okay, now we've got our ribs here. We're just going to cut them. I see the tops of the bones right there. So I'll know to cut in between them with the meat like this. Cutting pretty easy there. Mm, as I'm cutting into these, I can, I can smell them. They smell really, really good. Cut these like this. Sometimes I test for the bones, figure out where they are. You can see how the meat is already starting to like pull away from the bone. That's perfect. That's exactly what you want. You want them to stick to the meat, but if you if you tempt them too much, it pulls away, and that's called pull. So you want them to have a little bit of stick and pull to the meat. You don't want it to fall off. If they start falling off, it tastes good, but you end up with a big pile of pork with no bone, which is okay. You know, it's it's okay to eat like that, but I like to have chops where you can pick them up and you have something to hold on to and enjoy and eat and these are perfect for that. We're on the end here and that one's a little bit like that. So here we go. So put these in our pan. 
just let you kind of see what that looks like. It's got a little bit of bark on it. 